this is running through history. I'm at Heritage Hill Historical Park. This right behind me is the adobe, that of which was built in 1863 by Jose Serrano, thanks to a land grant given by Juan Batista Alvarado in 1842. That's eight years before California officially became a state by joining the union in 1850. Jose Serrano and his family built five adobes. This was the fifth one built in 1863 and is the state of California historical landmark number 199. The Serrano family were cattle ranchers and experienced a lot of droughts in between the years of 1842 and 1863. In 1864, due to their herds dying off, they had to give up their land to J.S. Slauson, who is a Los Angeles banker who then sold it to Dwight Whiting in 1884 who then forged the Santa Fe Railway planted a ton of eucalyptus trees and had the rights to the Aliso Creek water now this 10,668 acre ranch was called Rancho Cañada de los Alisos which means in Spanish Glen of the White Alders in reference to the white alder trees that grew here Let's go check out another cherished historical building here at Heritage Hill Historical Park. This is the Harvey Bennett Ranch House built in 1908, which housed the Bennett family who grew oranges for Sunkist thanks to the state deeded water rights to the Aliso Creek. The Aliso Creek water rights was a huge advantage given to the Bennett family. And with that advantage, they decided to grow oranges since they took a lot of water and the Aliso Creek had a lot of it. You can thank the Bennett family for the inspiration of Orange County. There's a bird. Let's go check out another historical building here at Heritage Hill Historical Park. This is the El Toro Grammar School, built in 1890, taught children from first grade to eighth grade between the years of 1890 and 1914. Juan Pierre Gless purchased this schoolhouse in 1914. Why? Because the district built a new schoolhouse that had two rooms. And if you only have two teachers, you can't have three rooms. So they abandoned this one and Juan Pierre Gless in 1914 purchased it. He then turned it into a church and in 1968 the church was abandoned and in 1977 the county of Orange brought the old schoolhouse was then an abandoned church to its current spot here at Heritage Hill Historical Park where they then re-renovated it back to its original schoolhouse form as you see today. William Holmes McGuffey was born September 23rd, 1800, after his family immigrated from Scotland in 1774. He became a professor at many prestigious schools, such as Washington and Jefferson College and Miami University. William Holmes McGuffey was the writer of the Eclectic Educational Series. This educational series grew in popularity so much so that it nearly sold as many copies as the Bible. Many children enjoyed this exact series of books in this exact same schoolhouse. There is a reason why this educational series was so widespread across America. This educational series taught children how to read, speak, and spell while nurturing core moral values evident within the literature that was specifically chosen for its use of terms and gradual escalation throughout the years in the series. I've got a few books from McGuffey's collection. They're from 1850. This is a fifth reader, and this is a sixth reader. This is the exact series that the students would have been studying right behind me in this schoolhouse built in 1890 here at Heritage Hill Historical Park. These are mine. Now that concludes Heritage Hill Historical Park. Let's head on to our next location, Irvine Ranch. Let's go.
We're here, this is running through history. We're at Irvine Ranch, our second location of the day. Cattle, sheep, and horses grazed the land that was soon to become the Irvine Ranch. The Irvine Ranch was assembled by James Irvine I, along with two partners in 1864, thanks to Mexican and Spanish land grants. The original Irvine Ranch was 120,000 acres and included parts of three Spanish ranchos. Rancho Lomas de Santiago, Rancho San Joaquin, and Rancho Santiago de Santa Ana. Santa Ana. Santa Ana. Sanatana. You can see on this map that the three ranchos that make up Irvine are just above Rancho Cañada de los Alisos, where Heritage Hill is. This wrought iron gate, built in 1891 in San Francisco, still stands as the entrance here at Old Irvine Boulevard. The Washingtonia robusta palm trees were planted here in 1907 and still border the swirly driveway leading up to the Irvine Mansion. In 1876, James Irvine I bought out his two partners, and when he died in 1886, he left the estate to his junior, James Irvine, who was only 19. Here is a picture of James Irvine Jr. and a friend riding a high-wheeled bicycle from San Francisco to Orange County to view their newly acquired land. A replica of the Irvine Mansion, now renamed as the Katie Wheeler Branch Library, officially opened February 23rd in 2008 and was the third library in Irvine. Now the original Irvine mansion burned down in 1965 and was never rebuilt until 2008. Katie Wheeler is the granddaughter of James Irvine I. And while she did see the restoration plans, she unfortunately did not live to see the completed rebuilding of her childhood home. In 1894, James Irvine Jr. incorporated the land holdings as the Irvine Company and began transitioning the ranch from ranching to farming. He grew an agricultural empire where tenant farmers grew a number of crops, including lima beans, black eyed peas, sugar beets, walnuts, avocados, strawberries, lemons, and you guessed it, oranges. This is the bunkhouse where tenant farmers and ranch hands would live. James Irvine I was a really nice guy. And if you put in your hard work for a couple of years, he'll promote you and you'll get your own house here on the land. There are many homes here just like this on the land that housed all of the supervisors. This is the mess hall built in 1906 and between the years of 1906 and 1976 served over 2 million meals. This is where hundreds of ranch hands would come together and have a meal. Duh. This is the home office built in 1891 and where the bookkeeper would pay all of the ranch hands. Now in 1929, it transitioned into a lab an agricultural lab with flasks and beakers and a bunch of sciencey stuff. Now, in the past four decades, the Irvine Ranch has gone through yet another transition, master planning. Many parts of this land have become villages, shopping centers, retail stores, and despite all of the development, we've still remained an agricultural empire by supplying most of the avocados to North America. Now that concludes today's episode of Running Through History. We started over at Heritage Hill and saw the Serrano Adobe built in 1863. We then visited the Bennett House who grew oranges for Sunkiss. Then we saw the El Toro Grammar School built in 1890 and then ran all the way to the Irvine Ranch. Oh my goodness, I am so tired. Thanks for joining me on the adventure today. This is Running Through History. Like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell notification so you're notified when I make another video. And remember, history is awesome.